At the time of the Branch Davidian standoff, it was very common to hear David Koresh referred to as the Wacko from Waco. But now, after watching the Netflix documentary, Waco, American Apocalypse, Koresh wasn't necessarily the only one with a slight screw loose. When you add in the feds, you got old Nutball and the Shifty Twins. Ooh, that's a good name for a band, Gary. You should write that one down. The conflict began with the biggest gunfight on American soil since the Civil War and ended with a fiery inferno captured live on national television. In between, it riveted TV viewers across the globe, becoming the biggest news story in the world. This account tells what happened in Waco, Texas in 1993 when cult leader David Koresh faced off against the federal government in a bloody 51-day siege. So this three-part documentary series is from Tiller Russell. He was the same guy that did the Netflix documentary on the Night Stalker. Now here, the three episodes not only focus on what was going on inside the compound, but also the craziness and the chaos that was happening inside the command rooms where the ATF and the FBI were working. Now, at first, I thought this was going to be a run-of-the-mill documentary that highlights all the negative areas that could be attributed to David Koresh and his followers. And while we do get some great insight into what was happening inside the compound, really thanks to interviews from people who were inside the walls and were able to escape the final flames, really, this documentary helps to pull back the governmental sheen and sanitized version that we were getting as it was happening. Now, the interviews are obviously what makes this documentary work. We hear from the Branch Davidians, as I had said, one of which was a child at the time. And then we get to hear from hostage negotiators from the ATF and FBI. We hear from law enforcement, journalists, even the FBI's hostage rescue team, which is kind of like a SWAT team on steroids. Now, all of the accounts, they help to paint a very vivid picture of what was happening, especially when it's combined with the video footage that was captured by the government and the media. From a technical standpoint, there's an effect that's used that looks kind of cool at first, but then it gets overused and starts to look very just computer generated and bleh. There's a drone-like shot where we see a representation of the compound, and it's rendered to look like the actual structures and surroundings. I mean, there's trees and cars and everything. And the camera will pan in and out and spin around the compound to really just give us all sorts of angles to get a better idea of where things are as people are describing them. And it looks pretty good when it's used sparingly. After a while, though, it began to look more and more like video game filler, and that made the novelty wear pretty quickly. It still helps to establish a rounded look of everything. I just wish it was used less so it didn't get repetitive. Aside from that, though, this is a riveting documentary. And something that became very surprising is that through all of the recorded interactions we hear between the negotiators and Koresh, as time goes on, Koresh sounds more and more like a rational person, while the government people start to unravel at the seams. The events are played out in chronological order, making them very easy to follow, which I appreciate. And even though I remember watching some of the footage as it was going on, I don't remember a ton. And this dives heavily into so many areas that weren't really brought into the light. The scenarios went from being just a snafu to a full-blown foobar moment, and it is heartbreaking to watch and hear not only the news footage, but also some of the interviewees recounting their experiences. There's one person that's interviewed who was a follower of Koresh's, and I am constantly torn on where I think she stands now that it's over and there's been a bunch of time to reflect on everything. This woman was one of the last people to escape the compound as it was going up in flames. But as she speaks, a lot of the time, it's almost like she's talking about her beliefs in the present. Like she believes what Koresh was saying about him being the Messiah and the, all the followers doing God's work. I mean, when put into context of their actions, it's hard to believe that some of this is rational thought. And I said earlier that at times Koresh was coming across as the most level-headed and sane person. I mean, don't get me wrong, the dude is still crazy pants. But we get to hear him spout his beliefs, and then he certainly he doesn't come across as being total sound of mind. But in contrast, to listen to all the government people talk, they're just as scary and nuts. I mean, the number of pissing matches that were going on inside the command post is just ridiculous, which led to all sorts of confusion and chaos and then destruction. I mean, even abandoning negotiations. There became a total breakdown of communications because for as frustrating and shifty as Koresh was, the government, they just kind of gave up speaking with him. And that's when all the crap really hit the fan. Now, this was incredibly interesting and informative to watch. And I really appreciate that the documentary takes the opportunity to not only highlight the actions of Koresh and his followers, but also put into context all the actions the ATF 
FBI, and hostage rescue team were undertaking that all then combined to create utter bedlam leading to just massive loss of life. Even if you're well-versed in the events at the Branch Davidian compound in Waco, this supposedly includes information that's never been released, so it could open up new avenues of discussion. This is a tough watch because we know the outcome, and then hearing from those that were directly affected, whether they were followers of Koresh or in law enforcement, many have heart-wrenching accounts that they share, humanizing the catastrophe in a way more visceral way than what was showcased in the media at the time. Now, the episodes are each between 45 and 50 minutes, but they fly by thanks to the compelling storytelling and editing, just laying out the narrative of events in an engaging and natural flow. Now, there is something that I need your help with because it's been driving me crazy for like over a week. In the first episode, like in the first 40-ish seconds, an instrumental plays. Now, it's only a few notes, but that same song has been used in a movie or a series trailer. But for the life of me, I just can't place it. And I know this has nothing to do with the review of the documentary, but if you can help me solve this, you're going to be drastically improving my mental health so that I can stop obsessing over it and then just move on with my life. All right, so back to the review. I watch a lot of documentaries, and sometimes they're really informative. Other times, they're salacious, and then still other times, they're just rehashing all of the same information that's been covered before. Now, for this, the addition of information that's not been released before does provide a little more oomph on why you should watch but it's also just told in a captivating way, giving us both sides of the story where each side both have moments of rational thought and other moments where they just seem off their rockers. It's also interesting to watch how media footage captures imagery of Timothy McVeigh and the crowd that's surrounding the media circus. Now, I didn't realize he'd been there, and then how what he witnessed helped to influence his future atrocity. There's no sex or nudity, but there is a ton of profanity and some horrific scenes and accounts of violence. Now, as a reminder, I don't give couch ratings to documentaries, but I do highly recommend checking out Waco, American Apocalypse on Netflix. So have there been any good documentaries you've seen recently? Let me know what you watched in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.